If you like our videos, then be sure to subscribe. We're trying to reach 200,000 subscribers and then overtake the other TODR channels. So please lend us a hand. Over the last month or so, China has been cracking down on video games, which hasn't come as particularly surprising news for Chinese gamers, because the CCP has been waging a war against video games for a while now. So in this video, we're trying to explain the latest move to ban effeminate characters and what this tells us about China and their politics. As you probably already know, video games are huge in China. Today, China is the world's largest market for video games, worth some $45 billion, with about 740 million players, about 110 million of whom are under 18. That means that there are more Chinese gamers than the entire populations of the US, Japan, Germany, France, and the UK combined. The Chinese gaming industry really kicked off in the 90s, when Chinese consumers started importing consoles from Japan. By the late 1990s, the CCP had become very wary of video games' addictive potential, with state media describing them as digital opium. So in 2000, the CCP banned gaming consoles and arcade machines outright, although this was eventually reversed in 2014. Regardless, as you might expect, this failed to deter gamers, who instead just started playing on their PCs instead. So in 2005, the government introduced a law limiting gaming for under 18s to three hours a day and requiring user identification for online games. Then sometime in the late 2000s, the CCP also opened video game addiction rehab centers, where treatments reportedly included antidepressants and shock therapy, with at least two patients known to have died because of it. Things really stepped up in 2013 when Xi Jinping came into power, especially after 2015, when the Chinese government found that nearly half of the total Chinese population suffered from some sort of short-sightedness, which they partially attributed to video games. To combat this, the CCP introduced increasingly draconian measures until August of this year, when the CCP introduced their strictest measure yet limiting under 18s to a maximum of three hours of gaming a week, and only between 8 and 9 p.m. on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. These are the strictest anti-gaming regulations anywhere in the world, and will apparently be enforced via facial recognition software, which will involve regularly scanning your face to prove that you're not a minor. Then in September, the CCP went even further, announcing that they'd be banning LGBTQ plus content and effeminate men from video games. This is clearly a political move, but it's not the first time the CCP has tried this, attempting a fair few times to promote pro-China video games, but none of them have really caught on. In 2017, Tencent released a frankly hilarious game called Clap for Xi Jinping, in which you literally watch a clip of Xi Jinping's Congress speech and then manically tap your smartphone screen to clap for him. And that happened because while Tencent are technically a giant private company, like all big companies in China, it's got strong ties to the Chinese government. And this sort of game was clearly the result of downstream pressure from the CCP. This sort of moralizing via video games isn't exclusive to China though. In Russia, for instance, portraying LGBTQ plus characters can lead to a ban, and in some Muslim-majority countries, smoking or alcohol consumption has to be removed. Even Australia has actually banned two Minecraft mods because they encourage drug consumption. But what does all of this mean? Well, it tells us two things about the CCP. Firstly, it shows us how seriously they're taking video games. And that's probably partly because the Chinese are the most avid video gamers in the world, with the average Chinese adult spending about 12 hours a week playing video games. Which means that gaming in China has now become politically important. That's because you can play video games with people from all around the world, and those interactions can shape your worldview, especially if you're spending 12 hours a week on them, which has the CCP worried. Secondly, these new regulations show how interventionist Xi Jinping's CCP has become. 
Restricting the amount that young people can game is one thing. South Korea actually introduced gaming curfews in 2011, and it's not impossible to imagine a Western government doing something similar, given 9 out of 10 US parents think their kids play too many video games. By enforcing that via invasive facial recognition software and banning effeminate men is another thing altogether. And sending gamers off to militaristic rehabilitation centers is another. As a final thing, you might expect some sort of response from gaming companies, but they've been remarkably silent on this issue. In the West, big companies like EA and Ubisoft are definitely conscious of LGBTQ issues. Doing stuff like removing the voiceover of a gender-critical journalist from Watchdog, or featuring female soldiers prominently in Battlefield 5. Which makes it pretty weird that gaming companies, who are usually pretty conscious of this sort of thing, have been completely silent when it comes to China's outright ban of all LGBTQ material. We're not saying that EA or Ubisoft have to, or even should necessarily be standing up to the CCP, it's just interesting that they haven't. And it goes to show how even Western companies are worried about China's new interventionist streak, and how it could potentially impact media around the world. This was also apparent in the now infamous Blitzdung case, where the US game developer Blizzard expelled Blitzdung, a top professional gamer from an international esports tournament, confiscated his winnings, and banned him from competing for a year, after he expressed support for Hong Kong's liberation in a live interview. After pressure from Western audiences, and even a letter from the US Congress, Blizzard did eventually do a partial U-turn, returning his winnings and reducing his ban to six months, but it's notable that it wasn't a total climb down. Something similar actually happened in 2020, when European game publisher GOG pulled the release of a game that was mocking President Xi Jinping, even though it had no Chinese investors and didn't plan to even sell the game in China. This all goes to show how strong the CCP's influence is, even in the West. So what do you think? Has the CCP got half a point when it comes to the video game ban? Should Western companies be more vocal in their opposition? Comment your thoughts down below. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you too want to back us on Patreon, then there's a link in the description.